Hi and welcome, thanks for joining us where we will be showing you on a weekly basis some rigs and traces. As per requested, we've received so many requests on rigs and traces. So, and today's topic is something obviously I think most anglers out there are interested in and that's catching edible fish. Now I'm going to start off with a, your basic trace that works every time. Okay, now with the basic trace it's very straightforward and that works for most edible species on our coastline. Um, I'm talking about fish ranging from 2 to 10 kilos, um, your general size, and that you can change by changing the hooks. Just the hook size and the thickness of your, your snoot. Your snoot is your piece of line between your swivel and your hook. Now that will get you a bit later, but let's just start with the basic trace. Now a nice length, the standard length for, for that type of trace is about 40 centimeters, nothing really longer than that. You rather make your sinker line longer because we can clip these days with, with the sinkers having this clip to cast with. So if you want to get more height in your bait, get it up a bit higher, you rather make your sinker line a bit longer. Now in general, just a nice average diameter, I use the Siglon fluorocarbon as I've mentioned in clips before. Uh, the 0.66 which is 54 pounds, 24.5 kilogram. This is a very nice thickness. Now, I'll go thinner if it's really calm, knowing kind of what species I'm, I'm targeting won't bite it off or break it off, and the sea is very clean. Then you'll go a bit more finesse, and when I say finesse, you'll use the 0.55 um, and thinner. And then for bronze bream specifically, in between the rocks, I use a 0.44, um, which is even thinner and that that makes a difference in your results it really does now very simple you're going to take this you're going to choose your hook now as i've mentioned before when it comes to edible fishing the ring soy is the only hook i really <laughs> put on um, there's there's a lot of good hooks on the market and a lot of ones you can consider now this is the 4-0 which is nice for your fish two to four to five kilo type fish you'll handle quite easily on this I caught an eagle ray of 80 kilos on this hook. So it's not, not necessarily your hook size. Make sure that the, the more importantly is that your bait size suits your hook. So that your hook's still proud and you can get a hook up. The hooks they make these days, and especially these ringed soys, are so strong they can really handle big fish. But for the purpose of this uh, rig, I'm going to use a 6 eye. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you'll adapt their hook size to the species. Now this exact trace I'll use for flatfish, even the diamonds and, and the honeycombs when, you, when you're targeting 60 to 100 kilo fish, I'll just switch to an 8 or a 10 hook for that. If you're fishing for cob and bigger cob, you're going to use an 8 or a 10 hook with nice big baits. In general size, a 6 will catch you most of the species and you can still catch a big cob on this. Now remember, a smaller hook can catch bigger fish, but a big hook you're going to battle to catch smaller fish. So if you're putting a bait out there to get a bite and you want to get a fish, there might be a couple of species feeding in that condition, not just cob, then you'll still catch a 30 kilo cob on this hook, no problem, even bigger. Um, just match your bait to your hook size. But this is a nice general edible trace. It's just a 6 hour ring soy that I'll use. On this I'll use a figure of 8 knot. Um, I've tested this. The, the Polymer on fluorocarbon as well as monofilament is stronger to tie your hook on but marginal compared to a figure of eight. I've used a figure of eight all these years. They've never dropped me. Never ever. Cut, cut your tag. I always leave the tag a little bit like that. Ugh, it's about three mil um, and that's just to assist in holding foam or holding bait on your hook and then the 40 centimeters I was talking about you cut it off Grab a swivel, important, I only use power swivels for this um, and the reason for that is they are much smaller for the same strength compared to the normal swivels. Also figure of eight knot and there we done. Okay, now that's your basic trace. You'll need to catch edibles and most species that don't have teeth. 
Um, when it comes to sharks, obviously we use steel, with shad we use steel, but for most edible and flat fish species, this is going to be a trace. This hook is right for uh, blue rays, smaller eagles, smaller duck bills, all of that. This hook's perfect. If you know you're targeting, you know, you're putting a big bait on, you're going to adapt your hook. If you're targeting bigger diamonds and honeycombs and bigger eagles, bigger um, uh, duck bills, you'll use a 10 or 8 or hook and because it needs to suit the size of your bait. All right, but that's your general trace. Now there's two ways of tying this to, uh, to your leader or your main line. And that depends on sometimes the fish you want to target or how you want to fish. Now with this very sharp hooks these days, chemically sharpened, when you're using a grapnel sinker like this, it's already sitting nicely in the sand. So most of the time when that fish, if he swallows, if your bait's nice, your bait presentation is nice and he swallows this, as soon as he pulls it a little bit and it hits that sinker, this hook is set. Half the time you don't have to strike it and that's when you're standing with your rod and just suddenly you feel it, whoop, and there it goes before you could even strike. It pulls you flat, floorboard. Now that happens because of the chemically sharpened hooks. But if you want to fish a semi-slide, all right, now remember what I said earlier, for my sinker line I'll be using Maxima and I make sure my sinker line is always uh, a bit thinner than, than my main line and you tie your sinker to that. For instance, I want to fish for Steambras, Pignose Grunter and, and, and the Cape Province as we know it. I'll tie a cone sinker, which I prefer. If the sea is not too rough, this is a nice edible sinker. It still rolls a little bit, just enough to roll off the side of a bank and present your bait for the fish where they'll be sitting feeding and uh, for casting and for distance it's a very nice sinker now with this I'm gonna make sure it's longer than my actual hook line now if you don't want a semi slide you'll tie this straight to the swivel the eye of the swivel that goes to your main line so it keeps your swivel out like that to your hook all right so both your sinker line and your main line goes onto the same eye of the swivel but if we want to fish a semi slide i'm going to tie a swivel to my sinker line also using a figure of eight knot here For this thickness uh, uh, or diameter of, of line we're using, figure eight is more than sufficient. It works very well. Cut the tag. Now I've got a separate sinker line, a sinker trace almost, if you want to call it. This, in other words, this is your leader line coming from your rod. Okay, so I'll put that through the eye of my sinker, which allows it now to slide on my main line. And then what will block it is the swivel to my hook. Now that gives you a semi-slide trace, or oh, well not a semi-slide, that's a slight uh, sinker trace. A semi-slide is if I add another swivel between my hook swivel, about 30 centimeters up on my leader line, and I allow my sinker only to slide for that 30 or 40 centimeters or how far you want it to slide. That's a semi-slide. The full slide in this case, it's, this will now on the leader line, coming from your rod, you've got your sinker. That in the bowl. You've got your hook hanging here. And you've got your sinker line. So when a fish takes this, it can actually pull it without feeling the sinker. Now, your, your very fussy feeders like your pignose grunter and your white stembras or white stembras in the cape, they feel, feel, feel the bait before they swallow it. And that's typically where I'll use them. The cob are getting a bit more clever as well. I use them for cob as well. And then you need to be, you need to still strike your fish. It's not going to use the sinker to set the hook. Um, so when your rod goes down, you'll set the hook yourself, which you'll do in any case. It's just uh, angler's instinct. So very simple guys, 40 centimeters. That's a general trace you can use for everything. Um, and what I meant with the diameter, you'll take this up. This is a 0.66 for general fishing. If you want to fish a bit more finesse, you can go to a 5.5 or a 6.0. Oh. 
and then targeting those bigger uh, flat fish I'll go up to one mil on your on your hook line and in between the rocks as well when you're fishing for reef fish or uh, mussel cracker if you're fishing for rock cod all the fish that's in between the reefs that's going to cut you off you take this up sure 0.9 -er, 1 mil even to a 1.1 mil would be advisable for your hook hook line um, then like I mentioned before your sinker line you'll make much thinner and fishing between the rocks guys I still use a grapnel and the reason I use a grapnel is uh, the, the nylon or the steel one now when you get stuck the main thing guys lose a lot of sinkers in the rocks you have to be very quick when you lift that first lift to get your sinker out to get your trace out you need to be quick with that and then real fast to get it out and you'll lose less sinkers and traces but when this sits in the rocks like this it fell in the water and sitting on the rocks if it's stuck now it gives you that one chance of unclipping when you pull it that first time to unclip and yeah your sinker comes so it gives you that additional chance of not getting stuck and that's why i use them and the same with the nylon ones which obviously is a it's actually a bit better because they don't unclip they'll get to the next one get stuck and you'll be able to pull it out as well same same reason now what's nice about the nylon sinkers for sand um, if you've got a very strong sea you'll leave leave the the nylon grabs this long but if you see is not so strong you can shorten them and that you will do to get your trace and your bait to move around a bit the main objective is you're putting your bait on if you're fishing on sand is to wash it off a bank into the gutter next to the bank on the side of the bank where most of your predatory fish will lie and wait for food to wash off the bank that's why banks is a good uh, a good structure in the ocean to fish and a bit of broken reef because they ambush ambush their fish and on a bank with the water washing over you've got fish sitting on the side of the bank waiting for whatever is washing off now if you can get your bait on the side of the bank and let it hang on off the side you're in the perfect spot or you want it to roll around a bit into that gully now looking at the water and we'll get to water reading a bit later on um, in our series is if you if you've got a side wash and your water's washing from the right to the left you're going to fish on the left of the bank and vice versa if you've got a pushing tide the water is washing over the bank you're going to fish in front of the bank on a pushing tide if it's a pulling tide and the water is washing off the back of the bank more often that's where your fish will sit so you're going to cast there now that's a very basic principle on fishing banks and we'll get into detail with that but yeah guys uh, feel free to ask us questions if there's something you didn't understand and thank you for watching our channel um, and thank you for subscribing make sure you subscribe uh, in the near future I'm gonna give away weekly prizes for all our subscribers so as soon as we get to that level I'll share it with you guys and make sure you subscribe